Hey folks, what is up? And Ikea31 here. One of the last games of Madden 18 for your viewing pleasure. This is actually a condensed version of a playoff game that I live streamed about a week ago. Um, yeah, well, not too much Madden 18 games going on for me right now. But anyhow, EA Play has just come and gone. And we got a little bit of news regarding Madden 19 that I thought was um, very interesting and pretty informative. I'm not going to go into breaking down trailers. I don't do that. Trailers are not anything that I really care that much about. And I think being um, overly reflexive and overly analytical about them is the height of lunacy. So there you go. But we did get some um, useful footage. I included the uh, link of the uh, video that um, Zan did where he broke down a little bit about the uh, running mechanics and some video footage of uh, different backs and motion demonstrating some of the running mechanics and where you get to see what the running motion will be like as far as planting goes and you know, how it looks visually and all that good stuff, which I thought was um, really promising. One of the really challenging things about running the ball in the game this year that it was very hard to pick your way through tight quarters. It was very hard to weave your way through traffic and negotiate through traffic because you were... There was no real way to avoid getting clumped into traffic between the tackles, which made, you know, the type of offense that I run... Um, the inside zone running game and the um, shotgun power and to a lesser degree the trap game as well tough to negotiate at times because a lot of times you are running right smack dab into either your own men or being um, pinballed into defenders with no real chance of being able to steer your way free or break free. You also saw that problem under center as well. Like my opponent here in this playoff game, he ran into that problem a lot when you combine the uh, blotch chain that was going on with the um, congestion it just made for a tough day for him running the football on this one here he's able to get into space when you get into space you're fine it's just that when you're in those tight quarters there's no real mechanic to really maneuver your way around and the footage i saw in the video looks pretty crisp now as far as blocking goes when we deal with things such as pulling alignment especially against odd fronts and also the shotgun game with the shotgun counter game has been pretty lackluster and the um off tackle and wide running game out of the gun is here a miss under center it's not nearly as bad but especially in the gun we have issues with playing linemen getting out in front on counters and your tackle is not really doing a consistent job of holding on to the edge on the off tackle running game that really put a crimp on a lot of what you could do we don't know much about you know how those are going to play out yet as far as the blocking interactions are concerned That'll come down the road, of course, when we get more information and see more footage and also play the game for ourselves, what's going on on that front. But as far as just from a mechanic standpoint, as far as what we know so far, can't really complain all that much. I think a lot of what we learned today did provide a source of optimism for people. Of course, from here, we need to see what's going to actually make it to release day between EA Play and when the game comes out. As we know last year, the feedback from EA Play was across the board pretty positive from, like I said, all elements of the community were pretty much um, really pleased with what they played as far as the game was concerned last year. But when the game released, not quite as much. The game was scaled back big time and never really regained its footing from the game that people experienced at EA Play. That cannot happen again. You know, the best version of the game can't be what people play in June and is never seen again. One of the things that I tweeted out basically said, you know what, all of this sounds really, really good. Things that were desperately needed, which I'll get into a little bit, but it's got to stay. <laughs> don't change anything. Only change things that need to be tweaked or tuned because they don't quite work as you planned, you know, going into launch. 
you know, fix bugs, fix glitches, but leave the mechanics in the game that are working properly the hell alone and let people adjust and adapt to how the game is playing. And if they don't, they'll just lose a lot of games until they stop being stubborn. Simple as that. But for now, let's touch on what we do know a little bit. We now know, and this has been confirmed, that the game is going to be released on PC. That, I think, is a wonderful thing. I don't think the PC... Well, here's what I'll say about the PC and the console crowd. What I suspect will happen is that the PC version of the game won't be um, involved in the competitive scene at all. And, you know, that's, that's, that's a perfect bastion for people that just want to play offline or just play one-off head-to-head games online but don't really want to be immersed in the you know, competitive ranked asset of the game. Now, you can do that on console as well with your franchise mode and whatnot, but if you're a PC gamer who prefers a game on PC, and only have Madden for your one console game, now you don't gotta worry about that. You can just play it on your PC as well. And with the game coming to PC, you have the PC mods. And let me tell you, the mod community is already lined up, chomping at the bit to get those NCAA mods fired up and ready to go. You know that's happening as soon as humanly possible. That is most certainly gonna go down. So you'll have your little virtual NCAA world within Madden, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. And that also means the end of these indie devs. I'm sorry, but you might as well read the indie devs, you know, Access Football, IMV, Canadian Football. You might as well read those guys' the last rights. It's over. It's done. They're not going to survive. They're, they're not going to be able to make a dent. If you still want to support those type of ventures, go right ahead and knock yourself out have fun, but they were already up against it as far as having a realistic shot at being, you know, viable at some point. Now with another platform for gamers to play the game on, that pretty much shuts the door. It, it's not gonna happen. So, with that being said, let me touch on a couple of items on this deep dive that um, Quinn Oldenburg put out today. I'm gonna touch on the coverages. That's my baby. There were some desperately needed updated information that we got regarding changes that needed to be made to cover four and cover three specifically, as well as some uh, fixes to Tampa 2 to um, flesh those coverages out and make them work uh, more efficiently for, well, more so against trips and bunch of compressed sets, which those coverages has had trouble dealing with um, the past couple of Maddens. And this is something that people like myself, DSK, Grasper, Beast Mode, we've been going at this for quite some time, just hounding them over these coverages and getting them beefed up to um, deal with how they play in a modern game. And, you know, not just us, but other guys as well. And what they've done, they've added a couple of variations to cover four. One, you have your straight, you know, cover four, spot drop, cover four, drop. You have your quarters match coverage, which is analogous to your um, cover three match, where you have man-to-man -man principles within the coverage where, um, for example, in the real world, outside corner, they have vertical releases, obviously. Depending on how the uh, slots the tight ends release will determine whether or not the safety is deep, man up and man coverage, or if they will help to bracket number one or convert to robber coverage. That's how it works in the real as far as the basic rules and um, a match quarter type of scheme. How it will play out in the game remains to be seen because sometimes the rules, they don't always translate from, you know, EA speak to the way it works in reality. So we got to see how that plays out. They also added a variation of cover four called cover four palms. This is also called two read. You see this a lot in the college level. You see a lot of quarters coverage in the college level because of the spread running game. Quarters coverage allows you to get your safeties involved as primary run defenders while still having a two deep look and also allowing them to play man match principles. What two read is, is reading the release of the number two receiver. And it's primarily a check for um, teams that like to run a lot of compression and pick routes and rub routes where you read release of the two receiver. If number two breaks out, instead of the um, number two defender, the slot defender, fighting over, the number one corner takes the first guy out. Number, the number two defender takes the first guy in. If everyone releases vertically, nothing changes. It just reverts back to straight quarters coverage. If both release inside, your normal cover four rules apply. But what it does with that first guy out, first guy in uh, rule set, it brings trap flats into play. 
where you think you have a soft corner out there out of a cover four look, but really he's converting to a flat. Gary Patterson has been playing this for a decade plus over at TCU. Notre Dame played this all the time last year. And at the NFL level, the NFL has really become a lot like the college game. It's, it's become a single high and quarters coverage leak. You don't see a lot of straight two deep anymore. If you have a two deep look, it's either going to be cover six, it's going to be quarters coverage or match quarters or some type of cloud coverage. Either that or you're seeing a lot of single high, which brings me to cover three match. Cover three match has been beefed up to not be blown apart versus trips which is completely analogous to what Cover 3 match was designed to do. Last year against Trips, it was pretty much a bloody mess. I'm here, I'm in a match look right now at a Cover 3, at a Cover 3 zone blitz. If this was a Trips set, I'd be forced to use a scene flat to cover the um, number 2 receiver vertically because he would release him to the inside every single time he'd be wide open. And again, versus compressed sets, bunch, and... Um, Tight says convert to something called Skate, which the game calls Mabel. Again, one of those instances where EA lingo does not co really correspond with real life lingo all the time. And what you'll get there, you'll get a defender cutting the flat and matching the seam inside, and your corner having his usual, you know, deep third responsibility. What I'll do, I'll break this down further in the next couple of weeks and months. Um, probably do some all 22 showing what those uh, coverage calls look in motion, just to kind of give you an idea of how they work and how they can screw the quarterback's mind. Because really, that's how you got to play now. You just can't allow all of the all of this space and free release. You have your time and space for your spot drop, but that's done very sparingly. That's done in very situational purposes, which brings me to. Protect the sticks being fixed and back. Thank God. So you can play your spot drop, cover three, cover four, and cover two in those, you know, third and forever, fourth and forever situations where you do want to keep it simple in this landmark drop. So now, remains to be seen if all of it pans out and all of it works. And if it does work, keep it in the damn game. <laughs> Don't change it. And if things are buggy and wonky with it, those are the things that you fix. We'll have to see some information come out regarding man coverage, because if you're going to be playing man match zones a lot, and converting the man coverage within those zones, man coverage footwork technique has to be incorporated well, otherwise it's irrelevant, you get blown apart anyway, so man coverage has to be tightened up, and that goes along with overall player movement in general, so I think if player movement does its thing, it'll kind of take care of this stuff as well, but it's good to see that our pleas are, are being answered. I like the um, sound of this new uh, nickel set, big nickel over G425. That sounds like 425 under to me. Again, that's, you know, classic TCU. And another example of the college influence trickling up to the NFL. It used to be years ago, the NFL influence would trickle down to college. Now it's the other way around, which is funny to see. But there you go. Those are my EA Play news and notes thoughts. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts as well. Talk to you all later. Peace.